Moving on to the question 20, it is to graph quadratic functions. This is a quadratic function here, x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now we have to write each step and graph it. Now the easiest of all steps would be the table method. Now first of all, this is a quadratic function. We can't just take random values. We need to take specific values. That is, uh, since it's positive x squared, this parabola will open upwards. Now somewhere over here. Now just imagine this the graph. You need to make sure that you find this vertex point, the x value of the vertex, and then take some points before the vertex and after the vertex. You just can't take any random points you want. You can't just take any random points. You need to take specific points. How do you find this x value of vertex? That is given by the formula minus b by 2a, the x-axis of vertex. Now, once you use this formula, you will get where the vertex is lying. Now, let's substitute. What is it? Uh, this can be written in the standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, substitute over here. Minus sine as it is. b value is 6 divided by 2 times a. That is 1. X, uh, a value is 1. x squared coefficient is 1. Now here it will be minus 3. This is very important value. Why? Because now that when you make the table, x and y is enough. Or you can make more, table, uh, more columns for more detail. I'll just write x and y. Now here the midpoint will be minus 3. Take any two values less than minus 3 and more than minus 3. You can take 2, 3, 4, 5, up to you. You can take any um, jump also. You can take say minus... 4, 5, minus 7, like a jump of 2, that is also fine. But I'll just take simple values, easy to understand. Minus 3 is over here, so it'll be minus 4 and minus 5. Two lesser values and two bigger values. Minus 2, minus 1. Now, this is the x value of the table. You can substitute the x over here and find the y each time. But the simpler method is using your calculator. So all of you take your calculators and we click on the mode and we get so many options, right? Let's click on the mode seven. That is the table option. Now press this equation, type this equation out. Alpha x squared plus six alpha x plus eight. To get this x, you need to press alpha and the closing bracket symbol. Now you need to press equal to if you have the latest model of the calculator, you will get this option. Just press equal to again. Don't press anything. You're just one equation. Otherwise, once you type the equation, when you press equal to, you will get the start option. Now, where do you want to start is the starting x value, the lowest number of x. That is minus 5, the least value. And where do you want to end? At minus 1. And what is the step? Step is the jump between the values. It is minus 4, minus 3, minus 2. It's 1. If it was, say, 2, 4, 6, 8, then the step would be 2. That means you're jumping a value, right? So now it's just 1. Let's leave it as it is. Press equal to. And you get the table. For minus 5, the values are 3. Then 0, minus 1, 0, 3. So you can easily copy the values from this table. Now, I'll just write them out over here. It is 3, 0, minus 1. Again, 0 and 3. Because this is the vertex, right? This, sim this is the vertex. Then, obviously, it will be symmetrical. Now, once we have this, what do we do is we graph it up. Now, I'll just draw a rough graph. You, we know the vertex is at x value of minus 3. Imagine this is minus 3, minus 2, Minus 1, here minus 4, minus 5, this is 0, 1, that's not required. Now here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and over here 0, say minus 1, minus 2. So this is the basic graph. You generally will be given a graphing grid, so it will be much easier for you. Now at minus 3, we need to select the point minus 1, that's over here. That is the vertex point. Now, what else? We have, we can start with any other point. It's better to start with vertex and then choose any. I'll choose minus 5 is at 3. Minus 5 and 3 is over here. 
minus 4 is at 0, so it will be over here. Minus 2 is at 0 again. It, yes, this points must be symmetrical, and over here it will be minus 1 and 3. Now, remember, don't join them using straight line. Don't just draw a straight line between two points. Draw a smooth curve, okay? Draw a smooth curve and join. Mine is not so smooth, but just make sure you draw a smooth curve like this. Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a shade, but don't do this. Just make sure you just draw a single smooth curve. It'll be easier in paper. And this is the parabola. Now, this is the vertex. And these are the solution points. And it extends till be infinity, basically. It keeps on going. If you find more points as well, you'll get the similar shape. It just keeps on going. So that is the answer. Now, here they have also asked you to state the domain and range. So the domain is always all real numbers for each and every quadratic function. It's always all real numbers for all quadratic functions. Now, what about the range? Range is the y values. Now, domain is always related to the x values. Range is y values. Why is domain all real numbers? Because this keeps on extending forever, right? It keeps on going. So all x values are included. Whereas the range y is where the graph starts over here, but it opens upwards. So there is no part of the graph that is below this point of minus 1. So all points of y will be greater than or equal to negative 1. That is basically the range. You can write it. y is greater than or equal to negative 1 or... You can tell all real numbers greater than minus 1, greater than negative 1. So this is the answer. So anything is fine, whichever you choose. So this is how we basically graph it. Simple. Make sure you make uh, find the vertex, the table, and then the graph. Let us quickly look through the solution as well. The, the first is the axis of symmetry of the vertex. Then see this is the middle point, we go the same values and then graphing over here, this is the graph. And if you take appropriate, accu sorry, ac accurate scale, you will you will get the accurate graph. My scale over here was not at all accurate, but you, you can see this resemblance, some part is below, everything is almost right. And over here domain is all real numbers, whereas range, See, now I told over here y is greater than or equal to negative 1. It can be written like this as well. It's the same thing. It's up to you. So it's written exam. So whatever you write, write it properly. It's fine. You'll get full marks. And now these are all the same problems. Just one important thing to know is whenever you have the leading coefficient of positive, you know, if it's positive 2 or anything, it'll always open upwards. Whereas if it's minus, it'll go downwards. When you do the table, you'll get the points, and then accordingly, if you join them, you'll get the graph downwards. So here, the first step, defining the axis of symmetry of the vertex, and then using that point, two, two less points and two more points, and then easily graphing it up, and that's the answer. Now here, domain is always all real numbers, but the range is all values less than or equal to uh, positive 3. Now, which is this point? That is the vertex y value. See, over here, the vertex is minus 1, right? What is the y value? Here, it's 3. Since it's minus, it will be less than or equal to minus 3. If it was plus, it would open upwards. It will be greater than or equal to. So, here we have the domain and range. Please do solve all these problems. It's very simple. See, over here, for the vertex, it's minus b. See, this minus is there. Again, minus is there. It will be positive, final answer. B is 4. And 2 times A, A is again 2. So it will be 4 by 4. That is 1. And then we do the table and graph it up. Please try graphing all these problems by yourselves. I'll just quickly go through all the solutions. Now, this one is simple. There's no plus or minus. So no matter what, you should know the vertex will be 0 here. Even if you use the formula, it will be 0. Why? Because b is 0. Anything divided, 0 divided by anything will be 0, right? And then here, since it's only x, even the y value will be 0. And then graph it. It will be, since minus, it opens downwards. And the real numbers are all negative real numbers, or y is less than or equal to 0. This is, again, similar problem. All are simple, straightforward. Please do them by yourselves. You can pause the video, look into the solution, 
and then check your work. Here we have some interesting problem. They have told to compare graphs. Compare the graph of f of x to a quadratic function g of x with y intercept 1 and a vertex of 1, 3. Find which function has greater maximum. Now, what is y intercept? y intercept is this point. Can you see over here? This point, the, uh, the part of the graph which touches the y axis, that is at minus 2 for the graph f of x. But here, there is no x intercept. Why? Because x intercept is the part of the graph which touches the x axis. There's only y intercept here. Now they have told one more graph is having y intercept of 1. So this is over here, okay? y equals 1. And it has a vertex at 1, 3. This is the point. Now the two points of the graphs are given. Vertex is the turning point. Either this or this. It depends. If it's opening downwards, it will be maximum. Upwards, it will be minimum. Now, can you look over here? It has a point here. So it should be something like this, right? If you uh, draw, draw a smooth curve, it will go like this and it keeps on extending. Okay, that is not accurate, but something like this. So now, which is having a maximum? The maximum over here for f of x is 1, comma, minus 1. Whereas this is having a maximum of 1, comma, 3. By 4 units, 1, 2, 3, 4 units, f g of x graph is having a bigger maximum. So the function which is having greater maximum is the second graph g of x. That's the answer. The explanation is given, but you don't need to write so much detail. You can just graph it up. See, this graph is enough. I think so. Yeah, the graph is there. And you can easily compare, right? You can just tell the maximums. And see, it's four units above the vertex, say for the g of x. Four units above the vertex of the f of x function. Similarly, we have one more function. Please do this by yourselves. But over here, it's not maximum, it's minimum because they're opening upwards. Here we have everything y intercept is given, the vertex is given. Please first graph the other one. See, so this is the graph. And then you can tell which is having minimum the function g of x. You can compare it and write it out. This was an easy topic. I hope you have understood well. If you have any doubts, please post them in the comments. Please try to graph each and every question by yourselves. And the comparing one, please do graph both the functions. A rough graph is enough and then compare and write it. I'll see you in the next video.